The Kraft Food Company, makers of parquet margarine, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. There are two treats in store for you tomorrow when you buy Kraft's Parquet Margarine. The whole family is sure to enjoy the appetizing taste of parquet and the way it spreads smoothly even when ice cold. And this is extra. With every pound of parquet you buy, you can order a pair of lovely nylon stockings, famous Powers Model nylons at half price. In just a few minutes, I'll have more to tell you about this sensational offer by Kraft's Parquet Margarine. Like most old grads, the great Gildersleeve gets a touch of football in his blood this time of year, so he sneaks away from the office occasionally these crisp autumn afternoons to watch Leroy and the boys toss the ball around at junior high school. Another reason for visiting the school at odd hours is his interest in the principal, Miss Irene Henshaw. Right, George, these fall days take me back to the time when I was chucking a football. See, there's Irene. I wonder if she'd like to walk down to the athletic field with me. You, Irene! Oh, hello, Doc Morton. Yeah, I was just on my way to the athletic field. Care to come along? Well, I was on my way home, but it's such a lovely afternoon. Yeah, come along, and then I'll drive you home. Well, that'll be very nice. Good. You're very fetching today in that new suit. Thank you. Don't, uh, don't walk so fast, Doc Morton. Oh, I forgot. That's one of those tight pencil swim skirts. You can't cover much territory in that, can you? <laughs> well, it would be a handicap in a hundred-yard dash. Say, why walk at all? Why don't we just sit here under the tree for a while? Or uh, can you get down to the ground in that skirt? Come on. <laughs> I thought you were so interested in football. Do I am? In fact, I believe you said you were a, a gridiron great. In your days? Well, I didn't make anybody's All-American. But it was probably because I went to a small school. Oh. I was sort of a big fish in a small pond. Mm-hmm. Run way down the field, Peggy. I'll throw you a long one. Okay. Yeah, there's Leroy and Piggy. The regular squad has gone to the showers. Yeah, Leroy's practicing late. But he needs it. I'll just show those boys how to play football. You think you should, Throckmorton? Do I? Well, after all, it's been years since you played football. All I'm going to do is catch a pass and show the boys how to lug it across the goal line. Mm -hmm. Leroy! Oh, hi, Unc. Hi, Miss Gillisleeve. Hello, Piggy. Good, Good afternoon, Miss Henshaw. <laughs> Hello, boys. Leroy, do you want to throw me a pass? Are you kidding? No, indeed. I want to show you how to catch one and run for a touchdown. Throw him one, Leroy. Yeah, that's the spirit. I'll be the opposing team. Great. I'll circle Piggy's end the way I used to do at stake. Would you like me to hold your hat, Speedy? <laughs> no, I'll make this one with my hat on. You're all right, Leroy. Okay, I'll... Oh, what a wobbly pass. I ought to reach to catch it. Oh. Well, I got it. Here I come, Mr. Gillespie. I almost forgot about Piggy. But I'll make it 15 yards more. 10. Here he comes. Fine tackle. Oh! You didn't make it, Mr. Gillespie. I know, Piggy. We lost Tackle. Yeah, but I had a big target. <laughs> yes, yes. Here's your hat on. Ew. Thank you. You dropped your wallet. And here's your pen. And your elf's tooth. Oh, you really fell apart. <laughs> well, Throckmorton. Hello, Irene. Miss Henshaw, wasn't that a great shoestring tackle? It must have been. Here's your shoe, Throckmorton. <laughs> oh? 
I wondered why I was limping. Well, Piggy, that was the best tackle you ever made. Thank you, Dr. Olson. Dr. Olson? Well, hello, Gildersleeve. Hello, Clarence. Oh, do you two know each other? Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> do we know each other? <laughs> oh, well, uh, Dr. Olson helps coach our backfields when he has a few minutes to spare. Yeah, Doc's the greatest. Doc was a real football player. Well, I was mentioned on a few All-American selections. Yeah, I'll bet he won a few liars contests, too. <laughs> Come on, Piggy, run out for a pass. Okay. Gildersleeve, isn't this sort of thing a little too strenuous for you? What do you mean? Well, when a person is your age, he shouldn't get out on a football field, old man. <laughs> old oh, man. I-, I tried to tell Throckmorton. Well, it's hard to tell an old war horse. Here, let me brush off your nice green suit. It's blue. Oh, that's grass stained. And with a chalk stripe right up the middle of your back. Are you all right, Throckmorton? <laughs> of course I'm all right. Thank you. <laughs> Throckmorton, you've gained weight even since I've seen you. That's quite a rubber tire you're smuggling around your middle. <laughs> you're all right, Olson. Let's go home, Irene. Yes, I think we'd better. Uh, why don't I drive Irene, uh, Miss um, Henshaw, home? Why should you drive her home? Well, in a little while, you'll be so sore and stiff you can't get out of the car. Do you think so, Doctor? Oh, for... come along, Irene. You'd better hurry home and take a hot tub, tubby. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Olson. <laughs> Thanks for driving me home, Throckmorton. Wait a minute. I'll come around and help you out of the car. Maybe I'd better come around and help you out of the car. (laughs) No, Irene. Are you sure you can walk? Of course. My foot went to sleep. Way up to my neck. (laughs) Well, I won't ask you in because I really think you'd better go home and have a hot bath. No, stop worrying about what the doctor said. He isn't even a doctor. He's just an intern at the hospital. You seem to know a lot about him. Yeah, I'll say I do. What's between you two boys, Rockmorton? There's nothing between us. Not even friendship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wondered why he kept needling you this afternoon after you took that awful spill. Yeah, he's probably jealous. Of what? Well, he wanted to bring you home, didn't he? Sit down a minute, Rockmorton. If you don't think you'll get chilled out here in the porch swing. Well, I won't if I sit real close to you. Well. It is. It's darn piggy. Um, about this, uh, this jealousy you mentioned, it's so beautifully developed between you two, it must have been going on for some time. Huh? Well, every time I'm just about going steady with a girl, he shows up. Hmm. You mean you carry the ball to the goal line and he wants to make the touchdown. <laughs> Yeah, and if he doesn't watch it, I'm going to kick him right between the goalposts. <laughs> I take it that this uh, this rivalry dates back through quite a few girls. Oh, no, no, Irene. Now, don't get the wrong idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the fickle type. I'm a one-woman man. Well, I'm not thinking of you. I'm just wondering how sincere the doctor is. Well, that's another thing. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was going with a nurse at the hospital. A nurse? Yeah, he tried to cut me out there. And when I was going with Paula Winthrop, he really got obnoxious. Paula Winthrop? Yeah, and then when he broke that up, he tried to beat my time with Mae Kelly. He's real fickle. (laughs) Well, I've learned a lot. Well, you should know about him in case he asks you for a date. He has. He has? He asked me the first day he ever saw me. He did? Dr. Olson is a very persuasive man. You didn't give him a date, though, did you? Oh, I was tempted, but I didn't think I should on such short acquaintance. You're so right. Of course, I feel I know him better now. Mm, He's moving in. (laughs) Um, Irene. Yes? How about a date tomorrow night? All right. You think you'll feel like it after your exercise? Oh, I'll feel like it. I'm all right. Is a date, then? It's a date. Excuse me, will you stop Morton while I answer the phone? You, well, I'll have to run along soon. Well, I'll only be a minute. Take your time. Hello? 
Oh, by George, a hot bath will feel good. Oh, hello, Dr. Olson. Olson? You calling already? All right, I'll call you Clarence then. Zeke, he's breathing down my neck. <laughs> I wish I hadn't gone out to the athletic field and made myself look silly in front of Irene. Yeah, if I hadn't been there, that Olsen would have taken her home. And that piggy. He didn't have to tackle me so hard. I'm beginning not to like that boy. Hi, huh? Hello, Leroy. Hello, Miss Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, piggy. Piggy stand for dinner. Keen, huh? Yes, yeah, very keen. Gosh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm sorry I tackled you so hard this afternoon. Just forget it, Piggy. I thought you'd sidestep the way Dr. Olson does when he's coaching us. Let's forget Dr. Olson, too. I don't understand it, Piggy. When I was in college, he said they used to call him swivel hips. Yeah, but then he probably had more swivel and less hips. (laughs) You say you're staying for dinner, Piggy? Okay, I'll lay off. Yeah. Hey, Uncle, can we have that old football of yours in the attic? You're welcome to it. Thanks, Uncle. I don't care if I never hear about football again. Now, I don't blame you after what happened in front of your Miss Henshaw. With Dr. Olson around, how long is she going to be his Miss Henshaw? All right, that's carrying it far enough. I don't want to hear any more about football or Dr. Olson. Is that clear, Leroy? Okay, okay. Piggy? Yes, sir. Yes, Bertie. You think you'll be able to take a little nourishment tonight? Why shouldn't I be able to take nourishment? I heard the boys say you got scrimmage this afternoon. It, it was nothing, Bertie. I heard you got knocked flat right out of your shoes. That's nothing? It, well. Miss Guilty, you ought to take better care of yourself. Now, Bertie. You ought to go easy because you ain't no boy. Yeah, I know, Bertie. There's men in shape, there's men out of shape, you out of shape. <laughs> Bertie, please. It's one thing you are, you out of shape. Bertie, I don't want to hear any more about it. I just made it clear to the boys, and I think I should make it clear to you. Yes. Yeah. I'm just being a little sympathetic because you out of shape. <laughs> please don't mention my being out of shape again. Yes, but I just feel sorry for you. Well, why should you feel sorry for me? Because you're out of shape. <laughs> oh, I give up. Stop in at Peavy's and get a heating pad. It'll probably take the catch out of my back. Yeah, I don't want him to kid me, though, so I'll tell him the pad's for somebody else. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Peavy, what do you have in heating pads? I don't know. I never looked inside a heating pad. <laughs> what? I imagine there's some rubber and a lot of wires in there. Peavy, you know what I mean. No, yeah, why don't you say what you mean? <laughs> I want to buy a heating pad. Uh, of course, it isn't for me, you understand. No, oh, I didn't say it was. <laughs> well, I want to make that clear. There's no reason for me to buy a heating pad. Then you don't want it? <laughs> yes, I'll buy it. Well, you don't have to buy it if you don't want it. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> Mr. Yellow's leave. You're blowing hot and cold in this heating bag. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was a little with it, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hot, cold, and heating pad. I get it, Pete. Not until you give me six fifty for it. <laughs> Put it on my account. Well, well, one heating pad on one cold account. <laughs> well, you haven't bought much recently. Oh, good morning, Mr. Peavy. Yeah, hello, Dr. Olson. Oh, well, why do I have to run into him again? Oh, I killed the sleeve. Hello. Well, I'm glad to see you up and around. Why shouldn't I be up and around? I never felt better in my life. Will there be anything else besides the heating pad, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> is Gildersleeve buying a heating pad? Oh, this isn't for Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm buying it for a friend. 
wrap it as a gift, Petey. <laughs> my, my. <laughs> and I thought Gildersleeve might need a heating pad after seeing him on the football field yesterday. Now, see here, Olsen, I'm just as good an athlete as you. Oh, now, come now, Gildersleeve. Yeah, well, I'll admit my football playing days may be over. But what else do you do? You name the game. Well, I'd like to play you a game of handball at the Y. Hmm, you're on. Except the courts are being painted. <laughs> we will have that one. Well, as a doctor, I might hesitate to recommend handball to a man in uh, your shape. And stop talking about my shape. Yeah, how about tiddlywinks, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> yes, yes. I'll tell you what, Gildersleeve. How about a game of badminton this evening? Badminton? You play it with rackets and birds. Yeah, I know. But I have a date this evening. I realize that. You do? Well, I asked Irene to play badminton, and she said she'd enjoy it, but she had a date with you. Why can't the three of us play? Well, unless you're afraid I'll um, show you up. Confound it, we'll play badminton. <laughs> and I know who'll get the bird. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Here's news for every woman who loves a bargain. Kraft's Parquet Margarine makes it possible for you to get beautiful Powers Model nylon stockings at half price. These are lovely, full-fashioned nylons, styled by John Robert Powers and worn by many of America's best-dressed models. They're 51 gauge, 15 denier, and guaranteed first quality. A specially designed flexible top assures a smooth, perfect fit. And their tapered heel makes ankles look slimmer. They'd sell regularly at $1.50 a pair. But now you can get these famous Powers Model Nylons at half price. Only 75 cents a pair. This is all you do. Buy a pound of parquet margarine, tear off the yellow panel from the side of the package, and mail it to Kraft with 75 cents. This is just half the price you'd ordinarily pay for nylons like these. Complete instructions for ordering are given inside every parquet package. You have a choice of six sizes, a dark seam or self-color seam, and either temptation or glamour, two of the season's smartest shades. Order as many pairs as you want, and each pair costs you only 75 cents when you enclose the yellow end flap from a pound of Kraft's Parquet the margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. You can begin building a luxurious wardrobe of Powers Model Nylons at half price tomorrow when you buy Kraft's Parquet Margarine. Dr. Olson is proving to be a canny rival for the affections of Miss Irene Henshaw. He has found two glaring weaknesses in the armor of the great Gildersleeve, shortness of wind and overweight. However, the water commissioner feels confident he can hold his own in a game of badminton. Olson doesn't know I used to play a pretty good game of tennis. And badminton is very similar, Leroy. Yeah, you're lucky, Yunk. Smaller court. Sure, that'll make it easier. <laughs> smaller court, smaller racket, small bird... So I'll beat Olsen. Small chance. <laughs> you see, my boy. There's no exertion to this game. You look how I handle the racket. <laughs> yeah, you're dynamite. i got to go lace up my football. Well, go ahead if you don't want to watch this form. <laughs> Think I'll practice in front of the mirror. <laughs> Say, it wouldn't hurt to hit a bird here in the room. They're so light. Leroy, where are the birds? There's some kind of car, buddy. <laughs> No, Bertie, I was calling Leroy. Yes. Yeah. Stop coming back to our baby. The birds are in the box on the coffee table, huh? Oh, yes. Who says Bertie's in a box? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the badminton bird, Bertie. Oh. Look, Uncle, I've laced up that old football you gave me. Catch. You like can't catch with a racket in my hand. Oop. <laughs> Leroy. What kind of football is that? It doesn't bounce. What's in there, boys? Lead? Oh, it's full of beans. Beans? Watch this, my boy. I filled it full of beans to give it weight. Oh? I practice throwing this to develop my muscles, and then when I pass a real football, I'll throw it a mile. Oh, my goodness. Leroy, I'm going to have them dried beans for dinner some night. Yeah? 
What are we going to have now? Baked beans out of football? <laughs> <laughs> so I'd rather throw them than eat them anyway. Come on, Uncle. Let me throw you a pass. No, yeah, oh, you threw me a pass yesterday. I've got to concentrate on this badminton. Uh, toss me a bird out of the box. Okay. Birds in the box and beans in the football. What does that come to do anyway? <laughs> I reserved the court for two hours, Gildersleeve. I hope that isn't too long for you. Not for me, Olson. Now, Irene, why don't I play you and Gildersleeve? Oh, brother, does he think he's good? Well, I've never played badminton, Clarence. I'll just watch you boys. All right. When my worthy opponent has had enough, I'll give you a lesson. Uh, take the other court, Gildersleeve, and we'll warm up. I'm warm. <laughs> yeah, I'll have the birds flying by him so fast, you think a flock of geese went through the gymnasium. Shall we rally for service? What does that mean? You well. It means three times over the net, and the first one who misses loses the serve. Oh. Here we go. One. <laughs> Two. <laughs> three. Four. Oops. Oh, Gordon, <laughs> you missed it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Now, as, as I understand, it, Clarence serves. Yes, yes. <laughs> Irene, you're catching onto this game in a hurry. Thank you. I'll bet if you came out with me a couple of nights a week in no time at all... Dolson, you're served. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You ready? Waiting. Yeah, that's an easy one. Now, watch out for this one. <clears throat> He's dropping right over the net. I'll have to run for it. Got it. Uh, it's a nice, that's a nice get, Gildersleeve. Mm, over my head. He's running me to death. Good, Strathmorton. I hate to do this to you, old man. Zeke up to the net again. <laughs> yeah, didn't think I'd get it. What's this shot, Irene? A beauty. Confoundity lobbed it over my head. I'll show him. Zeke missed it. <laughs> Winded. Well, Gildersleeve, are you going to play or just stand there holding up the wall? Yeah. Well, I do have a little charley horse, I guess. Well, you better sit down for a while. You did very well, Throckmorton. Sit down here by me. Yeah. Thank you, Irene. Now, Irene, you can't just sit there. Come out on the court, and I'll teach you something about the game. Darn him. Oh, I, I think I'd enjoy the game. Well, I'd enjoy teaching you. Yeah, wait a minute. I'm ready to play again. Hey, no, Gildersleeve, no, no. Rest. Doctor's orders. Oh, sure. Now, now, um, what do I do, Clarence? Well, first, Irene, I teach you how to hold the racket. Mm -hmm. I'll, um, I'll have to put my arms around you to show you the grip. Mm-hmm. What is he, a doctor or a Swedish masseuse? <laughs> and that's the idea. Now relax while I show you how to swing. All right. How's your Charlie horse, Rock Morton? Great. I got a Charlie horse in my head for ever coming out here. <laughs> I could dance all right. Yes, sir. You could dance in one spot. Everything don't have to move just because you're dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying home, Bertie. How about you taking Miss Hinge out to the dance? No, Bertie, when I phoned her today, it was too late. That Dr. Olson beat you to it, huh? Yeah, he's beating me soundly. Football, badminton. Romance? Bertie, please. I don't want to ever hear that word again. I'm through. Well, that's a good time to quit when she says you're through. <laughs> no, Bertie, she didn't exactly say that. And I know when I'm licked. 
Yes, sir. I've never been eased out in such a sneaky way. The big show-off. Him and his tight-fitting T-shirts. And Irene fell for old muscle-bound. Now, Mr. Gill, please, you give up too easy. Miss Henshaw ain't the flighty type. Oh, yes, she is. You should have seen her when Olsen was teaching her to play badminton. Neither one could keep an eye on the bird. Oh? Oh, I see who's at the door. Yeah, all right. Yes, I guess I can't blame Olsen for liking an attractive girl. By George, it's Irene's fault. And if I ever see her again, I'll tell her I never want to see her again. Miss Gill, please, it's Miss Henshaw. Your Irene? Hello, Throckmorton. Am I glad to see you. <laughs> I'm glad you're glad. Excuse me, something's burning in the kitchen. <laughs> Do you think it's terrible of me to stop by? Yeah, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Olsen isn't waiting in the car, is he? <laughs> no, of course not. I stopped by to see if you still want to take me to the dance. You bet I do. <laughs> I thought you had a date. I'd rather go with you, and now I can. Great. What happened to the ham athlete? Dr. Olson had to go to the hospital. Your hospital duty? He's a patient tonight. Oh? Well, what happened? Well, he got a little too athletic and came down with a badly sprained toe. Bully for him. Mm. There was a football on the field this afternoon, and he said, Watch me kick it through the goalpost. Yes? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then, you know, the strangest thing happened, Throckmorton. He ran up, kicked it, and beans scattered all over the field. <laughs> well, Doc got some of his own medicine. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Tomorrow's the day to buy Kraft's wonderful parquet margarine, the margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. You'll enjoy parquet's freshness and flavor, and you'll also enjoy the opportunity to build a glamorous hosiery wardrobe at half price. In every package of parquet margarine, you'll find full instructions for ordering famous Powers Model nylon stockings for just 75 cents. When you go shopping tomorrow, remember to get Kraft's delicious, smooth-spreading margarine Parquet margarine. The nurse said Dr. Olson was in this room, Throckmorton. Be good. Let's hurry and see him so we can be on our way to the dance. You know, it's very considerate of you to bring him a gift. Well, Irene, this is my way of forgiving him for ribbing me about my Charlie horse. You go in first. All right. Clarence. Come in. Oh, Irene. How nice of you to come see me. Hello, Clarence. How's the sprained toe? Oh, it's better. Uh, how did you ever get rid of that big fat waterfall? Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you. I know. <laughs> now, Clarence, that's no way to talk about a man who's bringing you a gift. A gift from Gildersleeve? Yes, Olsen, on our way to the dance tonight. I wanted to give you my heating pad. Gildersleeve? <laughs> Come along, Irene. Good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and his friend's side. Included in the cast are Walter Shetley, Kathy Lewis, Lillian Randolph, Tommy Cook, Peter Leeds, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Beacon. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Food Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. goes into your favorite sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. 
Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft prepared mustard. Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho on the NBC Radio Network. 